This is Kai Cutter TV with another presentation. We gotta talk about this. Okay, guys, the Trump administration has rescinded a rule that would have required international students to transfer schools or leave the country if their colleges hold classes entirely online this fall because of the coronavirus pandemic. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement announced the decision as a court hearing was getting underway on a challenge to the rule by Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Something is going on, guys. Why is Trump caving in left and right on his policies that he once stood firm? Is he in fear of losing the upcoming election, therefore pandering to a new potential voting demographic, meanwhile isolating the very people that voted for him? I don't know. Check this out. Well, the Trump administration rescinding a rule that would have required international students to transfer schools or leave the country if their schools held classes entirely online this fall. We told you about that rule last week. A lawsuit was just filed to put a hold on the policy from being enforced. The suit claimed the policy was not fair to international students and it put pressure on universities to open their campuses without regard for the health and safety of the campus as a whole. IU, Purdue, and Notre Dame among dozens of schools supporting that lawsuit. The decision to drop the policy was announced at a hearing for the lawsuit. The administration is rescinding its policy that would bar international students who only take classes online from staying in the U.S. A little over a week ago, ICE announced those students would have to leave the U.S. or transfer schools. UW Chancellor Rebecca Blank called the announcement encouraging. <clears throat> she said the swift and strong response demonstrates what an important place international students have on our campuses and in our country. All right, Mike, thank you. ICE is now scrapping a new rule that would have deported international students if classes are held online this fall. And this comes after harsh backlash from universities nationwide. That includes Johns Hopkins and UMD, as well as a lawsuit filed by several states, including Maryland. The Trump administration now says it will continue granting visas to international students, even if all their upcoming classwork is done online. Now, last week, ICE issued a new rule threatening to deport students if they didn't take in-person classes. Okay, protesters call for abolishment of ICE. These illegal immigrant advocates that call to abolish ICE and defund the police are nothing more than left-wing extremists that will plunge our nation into more lawlessness. Also, these illegal aliens that are in detention centers are like most people that go to prison. They will lie, steal, cheat, and say anything they have to in order to be released. So I'm not buying that ICE detention centers don't have basic necessities like soap and sanitizer. And this isn't summer camp. So if you get treated like a criminal, it's because you violated U.S. federal law being in the country illegally. Check this out. More than a dozen people calling for the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency to be abolished demonstrated in Santa Maria today. Protesters said they feel the immigration system in the U.S. has failed and treats people inhumanely. They said they want to see a new agency created to replace ICE. We're here today to oppose the global terror of global capitalism and stand in solidarity. This is the second protest outside the ICE building in the past two weeks. New York Democratic Congresswoman Kathleen Ray says thousands of migrants in U.S. custody have tested positive for the coronavirus. It is clear that ICE and its contractors have not taken this outbreak seriously and have not treated it aggressively enough. Ray says right now the facilities are cramped and safety measures are left up to the private contractors that operate them. Working closely with our government partners, we suspended in-person visitation in March. Damon Hinninger with the private prison company Core Civic told lawmakers his company is ensuring the employees and detainees at its 16 detention centers are safe and healthy. Our staff are required to wear masks and we provide masks to both our staff and detainees in our ICE facilities. Hinninger says every employee and individual undergoes a temperature check and is screened for COVID-19 symptoms before entering. CoreCivic separately houses from the general population any detainee who tests positive for COVID-19 or who is exposed to a positive case. But Ray says that's not enough. She says ICE instead should pursue alternatives to detention. And release those detainees who pose no threat to communities. It's completely righteous for us to question ICE's treatment and response to COVID-19. But let us not go too far. But Louisiana Republican Clay Higgins says releasing detainees also risks spreading the virus into the community. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicky. 
Coronavirus cases in ICE detention facilities are rising quickly. More than 3,000 detainees nationwide have tested positive for the virus in 70 facilities, according to ICE data. At least two of them have died from COVID-19. In May, Newsy obtained audio from the sister of Carlos Escobar Mejia. At the age of 57, he became the first ICE detainee to die from the virus. ICE says it has released over 900 vulnerable immigrants in the past months as health experts have raised concerns about how easily the virus can spread in detention centers. Another 500 at-risk detainees have been released by federal judges' orders. Still, more than 20,000 remain in ICE custody, nearly half of them without criminal convictions. In April, we talked to an asylum seeker detained in Texas. The vast majority of immigrants in ICE custody are held in facilities operated by private prison contractors. On Monday, the CEOs of four of these companies testified to Congress about actions they are taking to minimize the spread of COVID-19. COVID-19 specific cleaning supplies and hygiene products have been continuously available in all housing units. Our staff are required to wear masks and we provide masks to both our staff and detainees in our ICE facilities. Detainees and some guards have said gloves, masks, soap and disinfectant are in short supply in some private facilities for both the staff and immigrants. Nearly a thousand employees at private detention centers have contracted the virus and five have died. Guidance to facility personnel must be clear and explicit. Transfers between facilities must be stopped immediately and adequate medical care must be provided. A federal judge recently ruled that children must be released from ICE detention by Friday because the centers, quote, are on fire and there is no more time for half measures. ICE currently detains roughly 260 family members at three facilities in Texas and Pennsylvania. Two of those facilities are operated by private contractors. The government said in court that it might separate the families and release the kids without their parents. The incident happened here on Main Street in Nashua, right across the street from the radio station. And now that radio show host is off the air. It is America. You should be speaking English. This viral video was initially posted by radio host Diana Ploss herself. In the three-minute tirade, Ploss takes issue with a landscaping crew working on a project Friday in Nashua, right across the street from her now former radio station, WSMN. Is anybody here illegal? Are these guys illegal? In the viral video, a black man eventually walks up and confronts her. I wasn't talking to you. You're harassing me. I have a right. To harass people? How am I, how am I harassing them? You're yelling at them. While am I yelling? He's a black man, and he's going to protect the brown man from this white woman. The radio station writes, Diana Ploss is no longer associated or affiliated in any way with WSMN or Bardis Russell Broadcasting LLC. We at WSMN value freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and assembly. We will not tolerate discrimination, racism, or hatred. The landscaping company, Morin's Landscaping, based in Hollis, New Hampshire, condemned the unprovoked verbal attack on its employees. Posting on Facebook, at Morin's, we recognize that any success we were able to achieve is only through the collaborative efforts of the many extremely talented and hardworking individuals who are not only native to our area, but also represent several countries and various cultures. Diana Ploss posted on her Facebook page that she will make a public statement tonight at 7 o'clock. Reporting live at Nashua, Todd Keskevich, WCVB.